Good day. Our scripture for the day is from Numbers 13 and 14. Let's read together. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will, will give anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants there. The descendants of, of Anak. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought too. Then the whole community began weeping aloud. And then they cried all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we, we had died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for, for us to, to return to Egypt? The Lord goes ahead of them. The great Yahweh that fed them when they were hungry, gave them something to drink when they were thirsty, took them through the Red Sea, uh, gave them light to, to, to follow, shows them the gift, the promised land. This is the, this is the, the whole purpose why you are here, the promised land. And then he asked, what do you say about this gift? And then they just says, hmm, we can't go against those people because they are stronger than us. We are nothing. We can't compare ourselves to, compare ourselves to them. They look, they compare, and, they, and then they live with this perception that this is the truth. We are nothing. There's giants in, in, in this land. And I think the greatest enemy is not others. In this case, the, the Anakites. The greatest enemy is actually the one from inside. The words that come from here and say, if we or I compare ourselves or myself to them, we are like grasshoppers. We are nothing. We are small and don't measure up. Someone once said, we live in the land of Ur. When we compare, we say, they are more beautiful there. They are bigger. They are better. They are faster or their cars are faster. They are richer, thinner. Their children are smarter. The mother-in-law is easier. The teeth are shinier. And so we go on. We can't help ourselves. It happens spontaneously. I don't know about you, but I often find myself comparing myself to something or someone else. Especially when I'm in the wilderness or, or desert, when I'm in a bad space or place. We compare everything. We compare the houses we live in, the cars we drive, our jobs, our friends, our clothes, our photos, the social media. We, we look at the highlight reel of someone else's life on Facebook and compare it to my everyday life. We look at others' looks and try to compare. How do I look compared to them? We compare our children, their grades, their achievements, and even their ponytails. And then we raise them to be just like us. We even compare our pain. 
our losses, our sickness, and our sorrows with others. It's a competition. My dad died, yeah, but my husband died. My children became sick. We compare our spiritual experiences and in encounters with God and others are measured too. When I was a child, we lived in the outskirts of Springs. The extension was called Dagefontein. Uh, I thought about this English Dagefontein and, and I wanted to, to translate it. But it, tra- but, it, but it translates to marijuana fountain. And that, that doesn't work. So we'll stick to Dagefontein. The Joneses of Dagefontein. To be fair, my dad had the ability to think outside the box. Uh, I want to say a bit, but no. He, he, he think outside the box a lot. So with that, he bought an Austin Mini one day. I think it was like in the 60s model. And this was in the early 90s. So it's like riding a dinosaur. And to color it further for you, it was a neon yellow Mini. You don't hide something like that. One day he came to pick us up from school and as we get in, he breaks the news that this Mini's reverse gear broke or the gears had broken and only reverse reverse gear work. Have you ever in your life driven backwards in a neon yellow Mini on the way to Dagefontein? There's no space to, to, to hide in that mini. It's too small. So for more than 15 kilometers, he just reversed that car. When he stops at robots or traffic lights, you, you, <laughs> you see people next to you and then you move to the other direction. It's hilarious, but also very shameful. And with this came a lot of stuff that conditioned me and forced me to measure myself myself with others. They have better than, than I have. Their stuff is more beautiful. They are richer. They actually drive forward. And these comparisons shaped me in most aspects of my life. I don't want to drive a car like that. I never want my children to go um, uh, to experience something like that. I want better. The Israelites are actually the best example of comparison. In this section, they measure up. We are weaker. We are like grasshoppers. They are stronger. But they also have a reputation for comparing themselves positively. We are the chosen people. Yahweh is our God. No one is as good as us. And we fall into the same trap because there will always be someone who has more than us and always someone with less than us. We also look back when we compare. Israelites said we should have stayed in Egypt. It was better there. Is it not better for us to return to Egypt? If only I could have what I used to have. Maybe that's the comparison trap for you as well, to look back. Uh, Maybe you in the wilderness or your own wilderness or desert at the moment. And when you look back, you remember the the good things of life. The, The days when it... When it, when it rained money, perhaps, um, it was uh, when I compared myself to others, I was actually in front. And with all these comparisons, examples, um, you can say, so what? I know I'm comparing myself to others. And I don't, I don't find any problems with it. It keeps me sane. It's actually, it's healthy competition. 
But Solomon says, uh, I observed that most people are motivated to, to succeed because they, are, they envy their neighbors. But this, this too is meaningless. It's like chasing the wind. He says, you can, you can do it. You can live with this comparison trap or comparison um, operandi. But he says, there's an effect of comparison. You get nowhere. You're never going to get to, to what you are chasing. You are wasting your time, your energy. Your sanity is affected. Your blood pressure rises unnecessary. And you just have to get pills to keep you calm. It steals from you. That's the effect it has. It steals the peace that should be there in your life. You become frustrated and possibly depressed. I caught myself in a pit many times on vacation. The, op the opposite should be true. But when I stay in a nice place and think, why can't I have a place like that? What should I do to have something like that? I will make much better use of it. I will appreciate it much more and, and, and. And it leaves me with a void. Solomon says it's, it's pointless. It is a rush after chasing the wind. This effect can leave me with, I'm never going to make it. I'll never have enough. You can be rich or poor and say that. And say that. I'll never have enough. I'm better maybe. Maybe you transpose the opposites. I'm better, I have more, etc. And that creates pride. That's the other side of this effect. And this effect of comparison can, can cost me dearly. For the Israelites, it is longer in the desert, trapped for longer in their situation. They, they built a wall between them and the gift God wanted to give them. For you, what is the effect for you? Solomon says, and yet better to have, it's better to have one hand full of quietness or rest or peace than two handfuls with hard work and chasing the wind. It's better to live with one hand open and comfortable than with two hands full of hustle and toil. Because it's hard work to keep up with what others are doing all the time. It's hard work to keep up with the Joneses. It's no easy task to walk this earth and find peace. Inside, inside of us, it seems something is at odds with the rhythm of things. And we are forever restless, dissatisfied, frustrated and hurting. We are so overloaded with desire that it is difficult to come to a simple rest. Desire often burns stronger than our contentment. So how can I, how can I and you stop this vicious circle of comparison? I think the first thing is to rest in the unique, uniqueness of what God made you to be. The truth is, God does not compare you to anyone else on this earth. No one. You are uniquely made. He made you unique with specific gifts and talents, with an idea and a dream about who you are and where you should go. Caleb recognized this. He says, we must certainly, certainly march up and take possession of the land for we can without a doubt gain the upper hand over it. We know who we are. 
we know the God that, that is with us. And when I find rest in what God thinks of me and how God looks at me, I am freed from the comparison trap in my life. Jesus says in Matthew 11, he says, come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest, how to be content with what you have. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. This is the big invitation of Jesus to, towards us. I want to give you rest. I want you to, to live with this peace that everything you have and everything you need is already in your hands. Paul says in Galatians 6, in the message also, he says, make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. And then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. There's, there's a, a uniqueness that you must treasure. Hold closely to your life and, and heart. The second thing is celebrate the people around you. Deliberately and loudly celebrating others frees you from comparison. That's the power it has. I think to teach our children to celebrate friends' gifts and habits instead of being jealous and envious of them or looking down on them can free them from this trap. What would a world look like if all of us looked at others like this? How would the world look like if we, we cherish others' gifts and talents, helping them to be better? So Paul writes in Romans 15, he says, those of us who are strong and able in the faith need to step in and lend a hand to those who falter, not just to to do what is most convenient for us. But strength is for service, not status. Each one of us need to look after the good of the people around us, asking ourselves, how can I help? That's exactly what Jesus did. He didn't make it easy for himself by avoiding people's troubles, but waded right in and helped out. To see others as a gift rather than competition. So the question today, who or what are you looking at? Who or what do you compare yourself to? Maybe the invitation to become aware of the comparisons you make in your life and become aware of the effect it has on your life. We are in the first week of Lent. And Lent is an invitation to surrender something. Perhaps it is this urge or desire to compare. Ask Him. Ask Him to bring and lead you to a life of freedom. A life that, that you can be, that you are content with. A life that that helps you to discover the uniqueness he gave you and, uh, and to celebrate the gifts and talents of others. A life of freedom is what we pray for. Let's pray together.
Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And we pray that you will take responsibility or you, you, that you will help us with our blindness. That you will guide us through our uniqueness, the gifts and talents we have provided by you and to see the gifts and talents of others, to celebrate them, to celebrate that, that gifts and talents they have and to open our eyes to the possibilities and dreams you have for us. Free us from the comparison trap. In the name of Jesus, amen. Receive the blessing. May the love of our Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.